What's up guys, Michael again. Now, I don't know about you, but sometimes the world feels like a dark place. The new batch of Rick and Morty will only have five episodes. California is on fire, again. And The Last of Us Part Two has just been delayed until May 2020. So when I got a chance recently to sit down and binge season two of Mob Psycho 100, i.e. the most wholesome anime on television, I was elated. Season two of Mob Psycho 100 does more than just tell a good story. It told a philosophically compelling one by pitting overpowered espers against society as a whole. And it makes us ask, what does heroism mean in the modern world? Welcome to this wisecrack edition of Mob Psycho 100, The Philosophy of the Ordinary Hero. And right on time, cue the sirens, spoilers ahead. But first, a quick recap for the uninitiated. Mob Psycho 100 follows the adventures of Kageyama Shigeo, also known as Mob. By all appearances, a normal, if not completely forgettable, second year student at Salt Middle School. What sets Mob apart from his peers are his godlike psychic powers, which he uses to exorcise spirits under the tutelage of his shady mentor, Regan Arataka. After defeating some psychic baddies from the terrorist organization Claw in season one, Mob has returned to normal life focusing on bettering himself instead of skating through his life with his powers. He mounts an unsuccessful bid for school president, pines after the love of his life, trains with the Body Improvement Club, and almost completes a 5K race. Along the way, Mob tries to give more thought about his feelings and what he wants. But Mob's peaceful life is upended during the latter part of the season when he confronts Claw's leader, Toichiro Suzuki. In the end, though, Mob is able to save the day and do some creative landscaping to the city. Now, in season one, we analyze Mob Psycho through the lens of an idea called the sublime. Loosely stated, the sublime is this idea in which something, a person, a work of art, even a good view, can totally overwhelm the senses and invoke a feeling of unfathomable awe, even godliness in the beholder. We analyze this primarily in relation to Mob's insane powers, which were the cause of many ego-destroying epiphanies in season one. <sighs> But in season two, we'd like to look at another prevailing question in the show, how characters find value in their lives. After all, everyone from the good guys to the bad guys to the in-between is determined to be someone. We see it when Reagan is being grilled by reporters for being a fraud. And we see it when the leader of Claw proclaims this. There's a world of difference between Reagan and Suzuki, but the main thing they clash on is this. Should we define our value from within society or without? Should a person try to make their mark upon society from above like our antagonist? Or should they make their mark from below like Mob? In order to really make sense of this question, we first have to lay some philosophical groundwork. In its character Searching for Value, Mob Psycho invokes the work of social theorist and Nobel laureate Ernest Becker. According to Becker, humans are unique amongst animals because they're self-aware. But this knowledge comes at a pretty hefty price. In his book, The Denial of Death, he writes, Man is literally split in two. He has an awareness of his own splendid uniqueness in that he sticks out of nature with the towering majesty, and yet, he goes back into the ground a few feet in order blindly and dumbly to rot and disappear forever. In other words, man is also the only animal that truly knows it will inevitably die. And since we can't literally overcome our impending deaths, Becker believes we feel compelled to symbolically transcend it. To him, this is heroism. The desire to make something of your life, be remembered, and in the process, reach a sort of symbolic immortality. It's the reason why Egyptian pharaohs built massive pyramids. And it's the same reason why characters in Mob Psycho seem hell-bent on being special. How does all of this relate to Mob Psycho and finding value in society? Well, Becker says that we literally create society so that we can give our fellow man the chance to symbolically triumph over death. 
and Becker's words, society itself is a codified hero system. Of course, not everyone needs to transcend death by becoming president or king. Simply nailing that promotion at work, or even having the most unnecessarily elaborate gender reveal party, is enough. It's why Reagan is constantly hustling with his questionable psychic business. And it's why Mob is trying so hard to impress Tsubomi. The important thing to Becker isn't to question which cultural hero channels are real. They're all symbolic after all. But rather, which ones are best for the individual? Is it really best for characters like Teru to define his self-worth in terms of his powers? Should Mob really be focusing on getting muscles? According to Becker, we all must ask ourselves, what is illusionary? What prevents the health, the coping with new problems, the life and survival of a given society? What are its real possibilities within the web of fictions in which it is suspended? In other words, we must decide what is the most appropriate way to feel significant in our own lives. Should we march to our own tune, or should we march to that of societies? In the former camp, we have almost all of our antagonists in Mob Psycho 100, who believe their psychic powers make them better than everyone else and exempt from the rules governing normal society. In season one, we saw characters like Teru emerge, another student at the neighboring middle school who believes his Esper abilities make him better than everyone else. <laughs> Teru even later goes so far to call himself the main character of his world. <laughs> a sentiment echoed by other villains. <laughs> As if to remind us that these people desperately need to find meaning in their own importance. Taro's sense of self-worth is totally dependent on a hero system that places himself at the center of the universe. Because of his powers, Taro can get everything he wants, but as Becker would ask, is this hero system healthy for Taro? As Mob sees it, no. All it does is belie a sense of emptiness, a lack of real meaning derived from loneliness. Mob chooses to largely reject his godlike powers, instead finding value in self-mastery, society, and the normal people around him. All of this despite Mob becoming the literal and unknowing figurehead of an entire religion. Instead, Mob believes that psychic powers are just like any other physical trait. As the faux psychic Reagan puts it best, by refusing to put psychic powers on a pedestal, Mob chooses instead to praise ordinary humanity, social connections, and the interdependence that comes with living in society. As he tells a group of foot soldiers in Claw, it's only through society that we can create even the most basic things. <laughs> Of course, Mob's view is ultimately challenged in the season's end by Claw's big bad boss, Suzuki. Unsurprisingly, Suzuki is also driven by a desire to be someone important and transcend death. Unfortunately for everyone else though, Suzuki is kind of a psychopath. For one, he seems to believe that the universe revolves around him simply because he can murder everyone. More worrying still, Suzuki has completely rejected the cultural hero systems that regular society has created. He scoffs at the idea that he might have to take into account the needs of others. And when faced with the prospect of destroying his hometown and everyone in it, he doesn't flinch. Yeah, 
なんならすべて破壊しても構わない Of course, Becker would say this cruel indifference and the bloodlust it breeds is also symptomatic of man's desire to transcend death. In his book Escape from Evil, Becker writes, It is obvious that man kills to cleanse the earth of tainted ones. And that is what victory means and how it commemorates his life and power. Man is bloodthirsty to ward off the flow of his own blood. In other words, man kills his fellow man in order to stave off the sense of impending doom by inflicting it on others. Suzuki needs to live outside of the bounds of society precisely because he only feels significant in inflicting pain upon it and its members, which kind of explains why he defaults to force in every situation. So here's the big question, Wisecrack. Which way of defining meaning in life is the right way to go? Should we find meaning within society or without? I think the best answer is to look towards all of the enemies Mob has faced and the change he's brought about. Time and time again, after Mob confronts an antagonist, they change and learn how to re enter society. In season one, there's Teru, who confronts Mob's sublime power after being hurled buck naked into the stratosphere. Now, Teru laughs at the idea that he's anything other than average. <laughs> Likewise, there are the members of Division 7, who, following their defeat at the hands of Mob, decide to become Reagan's disciples. Perhaps the most striking transformations, though, are the ones that happen at the end of Season 2. First, there's Serizawa, the completely unaware henchman who thinks that the terrorist organization is a legitimate business. Serizawa, I Originally a shut-in, Serizawa thinks he's re-entering society under Suzuki's watchful eye, but instead he's made to hurt people, in the process making his severe anxiety worse. However, it's not until he attacks Mob that all of this changes. When Mob absorbs his psychic energy and then directs it back to him, the two end up exchanging memories and emotions in the process. So, this is what society ultimately means to Mob, a new way of forging meaningful bonds between its members to change for the better. Ultimately, it's these very bonds with society that allows Mob to triumph over Suzuki, creating the final and most impactful character transformation in the process. Whereas Suzuki's own power literally consumes him, Mob is only able to control his own tremendous power because of his relationship with his brother. More importantly, it's Mob's willingness to bond with others that also saves Suzuki in the end. When Suzuki's powers go out of control and threaten to destroy him and everyone else, Mob decides to stay and contain the blast. The reason? Because Mob refuses to let Suzuki suffer alone. Mob manages to save Suzuki by creating a bond with him. So what do you think, Wisecrack? What is the best way to find meaning in life? Within society or without? Sure, we might not have psychic powers like Mob and Company, but geniuses and eccentrics choose to isolate themselves from society all the time. Provided they're not hurting anyone, are they really doing anything wrong? Or like Mob, should we instead prioritize the bonds that working within society creates? Either way, hit us up in the comments and let us know. And as always, a big thanks to all our amazing patrons who support our podcast and channel. Hit that subscribe button.